Hey friends, Ash here with GenSense, making a video, I guess, more aimed toward the beginners out there who are trying to understand what's the best way to apply a fragrance. I know, it sounds really straightforward, right? Uh, I could just make this video 30 seconds long and say, well, you take it and you press down on the top here and then it shoots fragrance onto you. That's how you do it. But that would be just a little bit too trollish for me. So in this video, I'm gonna go over places that you can spray the fragrance, things to look out for, things that might help you get a little better longevity out of the fragrance. Give you a quick rundown on Eau de Cologne versus Eau de Toilette versus Eau de Parfum versus Parfum. And just give you guys a quick beginner's crash course on applying your fragrances. So let's jump into this. First things first, let's talk about Eau de Cologne versus Eau de Toilette versus Eau de Parfum versus Parfum. Basically, your concentrations of your fragrances. What you'll hear in a lot of places, and this is actually completely incorrect, is that the higher the concentration, the better the projection, the better longevity as well. So what a lot of people would have you believe is that if you have an Eau de Toilette, that's always going to be weaker than an Eau de Parfum, which will always be weaker than a Parfum. So if you're unaware of what any of that means, it's basically just the concentration of the perfume oil versus the alcohol in the fragrance. So this is Sauvage Eau de Toilette, and this is Sauvage Parfum. So this one, the Eau de Toilette, has a lighter concentration of fragrance oils versus the Parfum. So here's a really quick and simplistic breakdown of the percentage of oils in your fragrance versus the percentage of alcohol based on the concentration. In an Eau de Cologne, you're going to be looking at between two and 4% oil versus alcohol. In an Eau de Toilette, you could be looking at between five and 15% of oil versus alcohol. And in Eau de Parfum, you're looking at between 15 and 20% typically. And then in a Parfum or an Extract de Parfum, you're looking at 20% and above. So yeah, common sense might tell you if there's more perfume oil versus alcohol, then it should perform better, right? Because there's more of the stuff in there that makes the actual fragrance. But again, going back to these two, Sauvage Eau de Toilette and Sauvage Parfum. I'm using these because it's just a very simple way of putting this across. Sauvage Eau de Toilette actually has much, much louder projection than Sauvage Parfum. Even though this is an Eau de Toilette and this is a Parfum, which is two full steps above the Eau de Toilette because you also have the Eau de Parfum that slots in between these two, this one, the Parfum, much lighter on projection, much, much lighter, actually. The Eau de Toilette of Sauvage will outperform the Parfum every day of the week. And I know I was talking about projection, but in terms of longevity, it's just as good as the Parfum, if not better. So if you ever hear somebody say that EDTs, Eau de Toilettes, are always weaker than Eau de Parfums and are always weaker than Parfums, then know that they're actually wrong. It depends on the fragrance and the actual aroma chemicals and naturals inside the fragrance as to how much it performs, how much it projects, how long it lasts. You could have a fragrance that's a parfum concentration that's mainly citruses and it won't last very long at all because citruses as a note don't last very much. They dissipate very quickly off your skin. Then you could have an eau de toilette that has a lot of aroma chemicals in there like ambroxan or amberwood that could project really heavily and last for a very long time. I say all of this just to let you know that you can't go by just the concentration when you're deciding how much to spray or where to spray. It's more important to know the particular fragrance that you're spraying on, the characteristics of that fragrance. You can't just have a one size fits all as far as how many sprays you do based off of the concentration. Paco Rabanne 1 million, for example, very popular. That's an Eau de Toilette and it is very, very strong. Then you have a fragrance like Dolce & Gabbana, the one Eau de Parfum, that's an Eau de Parfum concentration, but that does not project or last anywhere near as long as Paco Rabanne 1 million. Understand your fragrance, not necessarily the concentration. And one last quick note as far as the concentrations go, this is Guerlain Lhomme Ideal Cologne. So if you look at this, you might think, oh, that's an Eau de Cologne, that's gonna be really weak very low in terms of the 
amount of oil in here versus the alcohol. But this is actually an eau de toilette. It's not an eau de cologne, and lots and lots of fragrances out there will do that. They'll just throw cologne on the end of the name of a fragrance to let you know that it's a fresher take on that fragrance. For example, Dior Om Cologne, which that one is actually pretty weak, but same idea. So if you see something like this, a fragrance that's branded a cologne, check the actual concentration on here because I've seen lots of guys online say, oh, that's a cologne that's gonna be super weak. They're just doing that as a naming convention, kind of like you'll see on other fragrances, Absolute or extreme or intense or something like that. They're more so just trying to get across the idea to you of when that fragrance would be used, not necessarily what the concentration is. If you're having trouble, especially early on, knowing how strong your fragrance is, one thing you can do is go to Fragrantica.com, look up your fragrance, and there will be a little section there where people have voted as to how strong they think that fragrance is. You'll see a little section for longevity, which is how long the fragrance lasts, and then sillage, which is going to be your scent trail or your scent cloud. So if you see something on there that has a really heavy sillage, people are letting you know this is a very powerful fragrance. And if you've got a very powerful fragrance, you probably don't want to spray as heavily as something that's going to be a lighter fragrance. We'll talk about that more in a second. Let's talk about places that you can spray fragrances on, places that work really well. First, let's talk about pulse points. That's what people typically talk about when you spray fragrances on. They say, oh, spray it on your pulse points. Of course, the two most popular spots to spray on fragrances are on your neck right here and on your wrist. Very often you'll see people spray their wrist right here and then rub it together, and that's a no-no. This gets talked about a lot, but just never rub it together. I've heard a lot of people say a lot of different things, that it destroys the molecules in the fragrance, basically kills the top notes, but essentially everybody agrees that you shouldn't do that. If you lightly dab the fragrance, that's different, but I've never really gone for that myself. And I myself actually never use my wrist when I spray fragrances on. And there's a couple reasons for that. Uh, one is if you're at a computer and you're typing, which I do have an office job, then your wrist sits on the desk and then kind of just rubs off the fragrance. Also, if you have kids and you pick your kids up, then that fragrance is gonna transfer from your wrist onto their butt. Over the many, many years that I've worn fragrances, the wrist has just never worked out all that well for me. It always ends up getting rubbed off on something. If I'm sitting in a chair, it just rubs off my wrist onto the arms of the chair. If I'm driving in my car, same thing. I sit my arm down, rubs off my wrist. It's just never worked all that well. One thing you can do is spray up a little bit on your forearm instead of hitting yourself directly on the wrist. That might help it last a little bit longer. But for me, myself, I actually prefer the crook of the elbow right here. The fragrance doesn't rub off as easily. This is also a pulse point right here, and I've actually had much more luck spraying inside the crook of my elbow. Of course, if you wanna smell the fragrance while you're wearing it, you end up doing this, and then some people might think something is wrong with you, but outside of that, it works really well. Of course, that really works best in the spring, summer, and early fall when you're wearing short sleeve shirts like this. If you've got a long sleeve shirt on and then you spray your elbow right here and put the shirt on over top of it, it's gonna have to kind of come out from underneath your sleeve. But spring, summer, fall works really well. Another place that you can spray, behind the ears, back here, which a lot of people don't think about. This is particularly good because it won't overwhelm your nose, your olfactive sense. Sometimes when you spray fragrances too high up here in your chest, and it's a very strong fragrance, it just bombards you all day. And then you end up going nose blind to it. If you spray it back here, you don't have to deal with that quite as much. Also, when you're moving around people, your scent trail is going to be right at about head level. So it's gonna be right there where people can easily pick it up. So if you go in close to somebody or you walk by people, that scent trail is going to be right there for people to pick it up. So yeah, right behind the ears works really well. Another thing that people will do sometimes is actually spray it into their hair or on the back of the neck. It is the same general idea as behind the ears on the back of the neck, and that's that it keeps the fragrance right there, kind of at head level. If you spray a fragrance in your hair, the fragrance will actually cling onto it and kind of last all day. Some people will say that spraying the fragrance directly into your hair dries your hair out. Uh, I've not really experience that, but to be honest, I don't spray it in my hair that often. If you have some issues with longevity though, that is a possibility if you wanna go that route. Another possible place that you can spray yourself, and this is gonna sound weird, behind your knee. I don't do this one basically ever at this point, but it's the same idea as with your elbow, only 
behind your knee. Basically, that's going to make it where when you're walking around, it's gonna be kicking out that scent cloud of whatever you sprayed back there. That is a pulse point, and that's something that you could think about, especially if you're mingling around a lot of people and you want to draw attention as you move around. Of course, there's also the neck right here, though for me, that's not really a preferred spot, and I'll tell you why. If you spray yourself in the neck, right here. It is a pulse point, of course, but if you have a strong fragrance on, it's gonna come right up and overwhelm your olfactive sense. You're gonna go nose blind to it, essentially. And also, if you get into a situation where somebody's getting up close and personal to you, they're not gonna wanna taste your fragrance. Yeah, I'm talking about somebody kissing you on the neck. If you've got a fragrance on there, it's not gonna be a very good experience for them. Another thing that you can do, of course, is spraying down into your shirt on the top of your chest here. You can potentially run into the same issue as on your neck where it wafts right up into your face. Again, especially if it's a strong fragrance. For me personally though, the chest works out a lot better than the neck. The neck for me is something that I never do at this point. Ultimately though, it's going to be up to you where you feel most comfortable with that fragrance, what you're trying to accomplish with that fragrance, and what kind of fragrance you have on. Is it a really loud club fragrance that's going to overwhelm you? Or is it a soft, subtle date kind of fragrance that's gonna draw people into you? That goes back again to knowing what you're wearing, how strong it is, what you're wearing it for, what you're wearing it to. You can also spray your fragrance on your clothes, of course, that's gonna help with longevity. Typically, it clings to the fibers of your clothes and will last longer, though the projection is typically not as loud when you spray it on your clothes versus your skin. So there's a little bit of a trade-off there. But if you have a strong fragrance and you spray it on your clothes, uh, like a jacket, for example, you can come back months later and pick that out of the closet and it will still have some of that smell. One thing with spraying on clothes though, make sure it won't stain. Some fragrances will stain white clothes, like this shirt. For example, here's Gallagher Fragrances Wicked Good. You can see the coloration in here, it's a deep amber. If I take this fragrance and I spray it directly onto this shirt, it's going to stain. So be aware of that, don't stain your clothes, don't ruin your clothes. If you're unsure if something might stain or not, just get yourself a piece of paper, spray the fragrance on there, see how it looks. If it turns a white piece of paper a different color and stains that piece of paper, there's a good chance it'll do the same to your clothes. Now as far as how many sprays of each fragrance you should do, I can't go over that with you in this video. I can't give you specifics about every single fragrance out there. That's something though that you will learn in time. Check out which fragrances you have right now. Look those up on Fragrantica. Ask people around you, can you smell this? Can you smell this? Eventually you're going to understand the fragrances that you own, how strong they are, how many sprays you need, and how many sprays is going to be overkill. There have been countless guys that have worn Dior Sauvage to the office knowing that it's a very safe, versatile, people-pleasing scent but then they've choked out everybody around them. And instead of it being a compliment getter and a safe fragrance, it turns into something that you wanna scrub off because everybody around you is having a coughing fit. This is a very strong fragrance. If you spray Dior Sauvage on yourself 10, 11, 12 times and go into an office or go into your job, it's not gonna go over very well. Spray it on only a few times though and go into work and it's gonna leave a really nice pleasing scent cloud that's gonna pull you compliments. So take just a little time to understand your fragrances. You don't have to go heavy on everything. And at the end of the day, it's better to be the guy that goes a little bit lighter on the fragrance than to be the guy that oversprays and becomes that cologne guy. You don't want that. You want the cologne to accentuate what you're wearing and how you're carrying yourself. You don't want it to define who you are as being that douchebag guy that sprays on everything 15 times. Apologies to all douchebag guys out there. So yeah, I think that about covers it. Just a quick recap here. Your concentration does not automatically determine how strong or how weak a fragrance is. You could have an eau de toilette that's a monster performer. You can have a parfum that's a weak performer. When you spray something on, make sure it's not gonna stain your clothes if you do decide to spray it on clothes. And if you're spraying on a pulse point, make sure that that pulse point is going to work for what you're doing. Like I said, don't spray yourself on the wrist if you're gonna be rubbing your wrist on things all day because that fragrance is gonna be gone within an hour. Don't spray yourself heavily on the neck if you're expecting to get a little bit of action because your partner is not gonna like that. And do just a little bit of research on your fragrances that you own, that you're wearing. That way you understand how strong or how weak they are and you can adjust your sprays accordingly. All right guys, that's gonna do it for me. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Hopefully this was helpful to some of you guys out there. I appreciate all your support. I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.